A video has gone viral showing a young Russian soldier captured in Ukraine. A group of women are seen comforting him and giving him a cup of tea and a pastry. He's then seen calling his mum. The young prisoner of war blows kisses as his mother answers and bursts into tears as soon as he sees her. In a social media post, Ukraine's defence ministry told Russian mothers they can travel to Kiev to take their captured boys home. The statement read, we Ukrainians do not fight mothers and their captive children. This is just one of a number of videos showing Russian soldiers crying, saying they didn't know what they were doing. Let's go now to Dr Jacob Wallace, who's an expert on propaganda and fake news at the Australian Strategic Policy Institute. Jacob, fighting on the ground is one thing, but there's also an information war going on. Who is winning that? Well, I think that what's been really noticeable about this conflict, Angela, is just how well Ukraine has handled uh, its psychological warfare response to Russian aggression. In part, uh, President Zelensky has taken the lead here by imploring to the international community direct mm -hmm. using social media for support and by emboldening his own his own people to uh, uh, confront their the Russian aggressors. Mm. How is Moscow manipulating and filtering information about its invasion of Ukraine? Well, the first point I'd, I'd make there, Angela, is that uh, to describe the content disseminated by Russian state media as information, I think, gives it more credit, perhaps, than, it's, than it deserves. Uh, Russian state media uh, uh, is designed to disseminate propaganda. That, that's been its stock in trade since the Cold War. It's consistently um, presented uh, the Ukrainian um, uh, political elite as uh, being made up of Nazis, despite the fact that President Zelensky is himself Jewish. Yeah. Uh, and it presents the, uh, the military conflict, the incursion, as an effort to prevent uh, genocide against ethnic Russians in eastern Ukraine. The Russian media has been told that they aren't allowed to use the words attack, invasion, war and two days ago the Russian government took the extraordinary step of restricting Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. Why is Moscow being so careful about how this invasion is being portrayed within Russia? Well there's there's two audiences here Angela and I think that uh, it's absolutely fundamentally important for the Kremlin to control the information environment uh, for its domestic population. They don't want to see the mobilization of domestic protests against the war. And in part, that's because it's Russian families who are going to have to provide the conscripts who will be serving on the front lines. And it's also, unfortunately, Russian families, not Putin and his cronies in the Kremlin, that will face the brunt of the harsh economic sanctions that will uh, affect uh, Russia's economy. And so we've heard reports, we've seen those videos of these Russian troops um, saying that they were told the people of Ukraine wanted to be liberated. Is, is that what they would be being told? Because they don't know any different in Russia. We saw a powerful exchange from the uh, Ukrainian ambassador at the UN who read, read out uh, text messages between a Russian soldier uh, and his mother. Uh, in which he described the expectation that they would be welcomed into Ukraine, uh, having prevented a, a genocide of ethnic Russians in the eastern provinces. And this is, of course, uh, a complete fabrication, and uh, the opposition of the Ukrainian people is, 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 is clear. Wartime propaganda is obviously not new, but social media is. How much has it changed the game? Social media has really changed how states deploy information warfare because we now have a situation where adversaries and strategic competitors have direct reach into the populations of, of, their, of their opponents. And they can use that reach via social media to shape perception, to, uh, to influence political outcomes, to interfere in elections and to shape the, the environment prior to... Uh, kinetic military conflict and U Ukraine is a really strong example of that phenomenon because uh, Russian state media, Russian information operations, covert strands of disinformation have been targeting Ukraine for the past decade. 
Yeah, and they've really, um, especially the president, has really commanded the attention of the world as well with all of the, uh, the videos he's been posting. Thank you so much for your expertise and your time tonight, Jacob.